Hauntingly Humdrum, a slice of life Halloween anthology. This episode, The Straw Guardian. The sun has gone down. I can finally get off this ridiculous thing. I suppose I can't really blame them. These new humans never believed the old stories. All the same, I would love to tie them up to a post all day and see how they like it. That thing will give you backaches like you wouldn't believe. The old woman who lived here a few years ago was the one who did this to me. From what I remember, she just really liked her privacy and did not want people nosing around in her business. So she created me as a kind of guardian, I suppose you could say. The old woman wanted me to guard her fields and her house, but at least I was able to walk about freely and avoid being stuck up on a post like a modern art piece. The post is not even the worst of it, actually. I know that normally beings like me are charged with scaring away those large black birds. Crows, I think they're called. I think the reasoning is something about the fact that if I look vaguely like one of them, the birds will be intimidated enough into submission to avoid the cornfield. Although... How a a straw-padded dummy wearing a ridiculous hat is meant to resemble one of them, I have no idea. It's always terribly aggravating when one of those birds lands on me and one of the humans is working in the fields nearby. When I'm alone, I, I can easily just shoo them off before they ruin my wardrobe. But of course, when one of the plodding humans comes around, I have to act like a prop. That is one reason why I appreciate the nights so much. I finally have a chance to attend to things like my looks and my own upkeep. Of course, I never have to do the things they do, like eat or sleep. Obviously, I move under night's cover, because if my current human saw me acting this way under the light of the sun, they would think I was some sort of demon or other such nonsense like that. I used to actually do odd jobs around the farm that the Old woman could not, might not look it, but I'm actually much stronger than many other beings. I would happily fulfill my past duties for this family, if they would only allow it. I'm not a mean-spirited creature, really. I just want them to understand what an amazing being I actually am. Perhaps I just need to make it more obvious that something different is going on around here. I know Farmer John keeps all the feed in the upper left in this shed. Those bags weigh several pounds each, and there's no way a single human could move them. I think I might change that. Let's see him try to rationalize this. (laughs) Ah, I knew old champ would be awake. He's the only one around here who knows what I really am. (laughs) Of course, I can't actually speak to him. But we have an understanding. He watches these stables for me, and I repay him every so often with a reward. Since I can't move about during the day, and doing so would cause amazing levels of panic, old champ watches these stables for me. I was never made aware of all the possible secrets that the old woman was hiding away from prying eyes around this property. But all the same, I never resented her for that. I always appreciated my role as it was my purpose. I am not omnipresent, of course, and I still have to move like anyone else, but at any given moment, I am connected to everything. So if anything ever happened in these stables, Champ knows to alert me. (laughs) Oh, yes, yes, boy, you are doing a great job. John keeps these wire rolls for fence repair, too. Wonder how long they can stretch out. The usual obstacle is that these particular humans seem to be very superstitious. I am different, 
It's true. But that's all I am. I won't be causing them any harm. If anyone is going to be receptive to this idea, it'd be the farmer's son, Sam. He's still young and has an open mind. He's also managed to find some of the things I've been leaving around the place. Of course, his parents don't believe a word he says about it. Or they just prefer to believe odd things just happen. Perhaps someday I will reveal myself. Since the old woman passed on, I haven't really had much to do around here. Except fake being an inanimate figure made of straw and cloth. In its heyday, this place was a bustling hive of activity, and some of the surrounding farms made it known that our success was not the most well-received. There were even a few attempts at robbery or invasion. Of course, they, they came more than they bargained for when they crossed that line. <laughs> Every single root, vine, and stem on this property can be placed under my thrall within a moment's thought. And it certainly made for some interesting evenings for me. <laughs> the old woman did have one room on this property that not even I was allowed to enter. She left the key to me before she passed. She told me to pass it on to the one clever enough to find her secrets. The old cellar has been locked up since before she died. And it falls to me to pass on this responsibility. Of course, it could all just be some loose pad in my head. <laughs> I want to think... That Sam may be the one, but if I'm wrong, there is no taking this back. One of the animal paddocks is not far from here. I might just have an idea. I always keep the charcoal stick in my pocket for occasions like this. Hmm. Perhaps if I had this mark where only he might find it. Um, there. That should do it. He will know it's for him, and the arrow will show him the way. Judging by the wind through these trees, I have a bit of time left before sunrise. Well, I would say that was a very productive evening. Let's see. <clears throat> Seed bag labels rearranged, tools and size thrown out on the roof of the greenhouse, three chickens plucked to the last feather, I have very light fingers. They didn't even bat an eyelid. And, of course, two axe heads sunk to the bottom of the farm pond. Altogether, I rate this night mm, a 7 for 10. I truly hope Sam is as smart as I believe, because I, I don't know how much more of this I can take. <laughs> Good night, Willow Farm. It seems I will be tied to you for many years to come. Perhaps literally. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Hauntingly Humdrum. This episode was written by Wesley Bryan, cast member of Thornvale and creator of The Story Vault. The Scarecrow was performed by David Hanna. Sound design by Brad Colebrook. The music used for the intro and outro of the podcast is The Show Must Be Go by Kevin McLeod. Links for transcripts and cast and crew information can be found in the show notes. Happy Halloween!